Let's first sum up the differences between FIFO and LIFO. Firstly, in an inflationary environment, the cost of the inventory bought first are of lower cost than those that are bought last. As such, the goods sold are of lower cost and the ending inventory are of higher cost under FIFO. Hence, the cost of goods sold in the income statement is lower, while the inventory value on the balance sheet is higher. Conversely, under LIFO, the goods sold are of higher cost and the ending inventory are of lower cost. Hence, the cost of goods sold in the income statement is higher, while the inventory value on the balance sheet is lower. All this means that the net income and income taxes reported under LIFO is lower than when it is under FIFO. Paying less taxes means that the amount of cash in the balance sheet is higher under LIFO. Because of this discrepancy, companies that report under LIFO must report a LIFO reserve. The LIFO reserve is the amount by which the LIFO inventory is less than the FIFO inventory. This value allows analysts to make financial statements prepared under LIFO comparable to those of FIFO firms. To make the adjustment, the first step the analyst has to take is to add the LIFO reserve to LIFO inventory on the balance sheet. As there is this surplus of cash from the lower taxes paid, the next step is to remove this from the cash balance. This amount is the LIFO reserve multiplied by the tax rate. On the other side of the balance sheet, the analyst has to adjust the retained earnings to balance the accounts. This is done by increasing the retained earnings by the LIFO reserve times 1 minus the tax rate. Over at the income statement, the analyst has to adjust the cost of goods sold. To give us a clue, we need to consider the previous period's LIFO reserve. During an accounting period, the change in the cost of goods sold due to reporting in LIFO instead of FIFO is accumulated to the LIFO reserve. For example, if a company's cost of goods sold in this period is $100 under FIFO but is $105 under LIFO, $5 has to be added to the LIFO reserve. So to adjust the LIFO statement to a FIFO statement, $5 should be subtracted from the cost of goods sold. In general, the analyst should subtract the change in LIFO reserve for the period to the LIFO cost of goods sold. These are the four steps to convert a LIFO-based statement to a FIFO-based statement. Make sure you remember these as we go through the following example. The balance sheet and income statement of a firm that reports under LIFO is as shown. Given that the income tax rate for the firm is 40%, compute the revised ending inventory cash balance, retained earnings, and cost of goods sold under FIFO for the year 2016. Pause the video now and work out your answers. And we're back. Let's run through the four adjustments that we've learned in sequence. Firstly, the FIFO inventory is the LIFO inventory plus the LIFO reserve. Simply plug in the figures and we have an inventory value of $8,240. Next, the FIFO cash balance is the LIFO cash balance minus the cumulative taxes saved. Plug in the figures and we get a cash balance under FIFO of $3,473. The FIFO retained earnings is the LIFO retained earnings plus the cumulative earnings not reported under LIFO. This amount is the LIFO reserve multiplied by 1 minus the tax rate. Plug in the figures and we get a figure of $19,809. And finally, in the income statement, the FIFO cost of goods sold is the LIFO cost of goods sold minus the change in LIFO reserve. Plug in the figures and we get the answer of $30,455. Having the adjusted figures for inventory, cash, retained earnings and cost of goods sold an analyst can apply these adjusted figures into the statements to get the FIFO balance sheet and FIFO income statement. With the adjusted financial statements, see if you can calculate the current ratio, inventory turnover, financial leverage, net margin and return on equity for the firm using the FIFO method. The ratios under LIFO have already been calculated. Pause the video now to work out your answers. 
And we're back. The current ratio is current assets divided by current liabilities. Summing up all the current assets in 2016, we have $22,784. All the current liabilities sum up to $8,260. The ratio is therefore 2.758. Inventory turnover is the cost of goods sold divided by the average inventory. The average inventory is calculated by the sum of the beginning and ending inventories and dividing by two. Plugging in the figures, we get an inventory turnover of 4.517. Financial leverage is the average total assets divided by the average total equity. Plugging in the figures, we get a ratio of 1.464. Net margin is the net income divided by the revenue. Plug in the figures and we get 12%. And the return on equity is the net income divided by the average total equity. Again, remember to use the average figure, which is the beginning equity plus ending equity divided by 2. The ROE is 32%. You're watching an excerpt from our comprehensive animation library. For more videos like these, head on down to prepnuggets.com. At PrepNuggets, let us do the hard work for you.